Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue on our discussion on filter design. For this video, I'm going to explain what is top couple resonator. I'm also going to explain why we need to have two resonator. We can definitely reduce the number of components by having one resonator. I'm going to explain why we need to have two resonator. Mainly the two resonator can be formed by either top capacitive or top inductive couple resonator. I'm also going to explain the difference between top capacitive and top inductive resonator. This will be the part 9 series discussion on filter design. I have put the playlist for the filter design under the description. So please take a look on those videos if you're keen to know more about filter design. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I also like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information, like for example, filter design. Once again, sincere thanks for your strong support. Firstly, Okay, I'm going to explain why we need to have two resonator. Individual resonance circuit or maybe one resonance circuit, they are often coupled together to form more antenation at certain frequency. Okay, which means that instead of one, we have two resonator, we can actually provide more antenation at certain frequency that we desire. Okay, so this is what it means here. Common form of coupling are capacitive, Okay, maybe not so common for transformer. Mainly the common form will be capacitive and also the inductive. And they can be done either at the top or bottom. In this video, we will be only looking at top coupling resonator. Okay, let's take a look on this top C and top L circuit here. Okay, on your left will be the top C couple circuit. On your right will be top L couple circuit. Okay, how you know, basically you can see that on top, will be a C, so therefore this is called a top C. But over here on top is a L, so therefore this is called a top L couple resonator. Okay, so over here you can see that this is basically formed up by a parallel resonator, another parallel resonator. So over here we can see that I have one resonator, I have the second resonator. They are linked by this so-called top couple capacitor. Same wise for top L couple circuit here. So this is one resonator. This is another resonator. Okay, they are all joined together by this top L couple circuit. Okay, so this is what I have explained early on. So now I'm going to explain why we need to have two resonator. Take a look on this diagram here. So basically this is frequency versus dB. Okay, so this is a frequency response for a single resonator and also dual resonator. So the dash red line belongs to the single resonator, while the green solid line belongs to the two resonator. So over here, can you see that by having dual resonator, I actually have a steeper row off factor, or maybe I have a steeper skirt over here. Can you see here? So this is desire, okay, because I have a faster row off factor, okay, for an ideal filter, we want this to be as steep as possible. So over here, you can see that instead of one, I actually have two in order to achieve a steeper row of factor. However, when we actually use two resonator, okay, we actually has a slightly wider bandwidth. Okay, so take a look over here. So basically, this is the zoom part over here. You can see that this is a single resonator. Okay, the green solid line is the dual resonator, you can see that the bandwidth for the two resonator actually slightly increase, and this can be simply neglected away. And hence, because of this, two resonator is always preferred because we are going to have a steeper row of factor. Let's talk about the capacity top, top resonator circuit. Okay, so if C12 is too large, Okay, which means that this C-chop is too large, too much coupling occurs. 
with the frequency response boarding drastically with two response peak in the filter pass band. So if let's say this C12 is too large, you can see over here, over coupling actually occur. So instead of one peak, we actually have two peak here. So we must be concerned about the value of C12. They cannot be too large. However, if C12 is too small, okay, not enough signal energy is passed from one resonator circuit to another one. And because of this, the insertion loss can be very high to a unacceptable level. So over here, you can see that when C12 is very small, okay, under coupling actually occur. And when under coupling occur, you can see that the insertion loss is quite a substantial numbers. Okay, which means that a lot of power is lost for the past band, and this is not desired. So the objective is to design them to have a critical coupling, which is shown in red here. So over here, you can see that basically they only have one peak and it's very close to the zero dB line here. So in short, if we have a C12, which is a very small number, the under coupling actually occur. And if we have C12, very huge C12, we actually have an over coupling effect. The solution to the two extreme on the previous page is critical coupling as I explained earlier on, where we actually obtain reasonable bandwidth and the lowest possible insertion loss. Okay, so when we actually do this, okay, we actually can have a very good bandwidth, which means that they are almost identical with the single resonator. Okay, we also possible to have the lowest possible insertion loss. The load Q of a critical couple resonator circuit is approximately equal to 0 0.07 times the load Q of one of its resonator. Okay, so the equation is written over here. Okay, so this is the load Q. Okay, so basically the load Q will be equals to 0 0.707 multiply the Q of one of the resonator. With this, you can actually guarantee critical coupling. The capacitor value used to couple two identical resonance circuit is given by this equation. Okay, so this is a C12 value here. So this is a C value of either the C1 or C2. Okay, they are most of the time they are similar. So the value should be the same for C1 and C2. Either one of them is here. And basically this is the Q of a single resonator. Okay, with this calculation, you actually can calculate with a critical coupling effect on the top capacitive resonance circuit. Next, I'm going to mention about inductive top resonator circuit. Okay, this is actually quite similar with capacitive coupling. Okay, inductive coupling, the frequency response depends on the amount of coupling. Okay, so over here, you can see that we also have over coupling. We also have under coupling. And of course, the key objective is to obtain the critical coupling. Okay, the value of the inductor used to couple two identical resonance circuit is given by this equation. Okay, so this is the L12 here. How much is the value? Okay, supposed to be the Q of a single resonator. So which means that the Q of a, this single resonator okay, multiplied by the L value. Okay, so again, like what I mentioned, they typically are symmetric. So this L1 is equal to L2. Okay, I can actually put the value over here. From here, I can calculate what is my L12 value. Same case over here, okay, it's a reverse effect of capacitive top resonator circuit. For capacitive, when C12 is small, okay, it will be under coupling, and C12 is big, okay, we actually have an over coupling. As for inductive top resonator circuit, when I actually have a very small L12, okay, over coupling occur, okay, which means that Instead of one bit, I actually have two bit. And also, when L12 is a very large number, under coupling occur, same as the capacitive effect. From here, you can see that we have a huge insertion loss, which is not ideal. And therefore, the objective is how to obtain the critical coupling based on this equation calculation. Next, I'm going to explain the difference between top capacitive and top inductive resonance. OK, 
Okay, on your left will be a top couple resonator, a C. Okay, while on your right will be a inductive couple resonator. So take a look over here. Okay, so basically this is over, under, and critical. So like what I mentioned earlier on, critical couple is what we want to achieve. But beside that, can you see over here? Okay, on the left, okay, basically for capacity couple resonator, you can see that we have a steeper roll off factor. Can you see here? So for top capacity couple resonator, we have a steeper roll off factor on the left side of the filter. As for inductive couple resonator here, you can see that we have a steeper roll off factor on the right hand side of the filter. So basically, this is the characteristic. For top capacitor, I have a steeper roll off factor okay, at the left of the filter design. While for inductive couple resonator, I actually have a steeper slope on the right hand side of the filter design. Okay, so this is what I have discussed earlier on. If we can have over coupling, this may not be desired because we have multiple bits or maybe two bits here. And we, if we have this under coupling, okay, we actually has a high insertion loss, okay, which is not desired. A filter for passband, most of the energy, or in fact, if possible, all the energy should be able to pass. But if we have a substantial insertion loss, a large amount of energy is lost in the passband, and hence this is not desired. Okay, we want to have high insertion loss at the stop band, but not on the pass band. So typically for top L and top C, they may be cascade together. Okay, when we actually cascade them together, we can actually obtain a more symmetric frequency response. Okay, which means that if let's say we couple C, top C and top L, okay, you can see that I also have a steeper roll off factor on the left, contribute by the capacitor couple resonator, while I also were able to achieve a steeper roll off factor on the right, which is contributed by the inductive couple resonator. So in short, okay, it may be good or consider this to combine the top L and top C together in order to get a symmetric frequency response. So this is what you want to say. Top couple L bandpass filter should be used when it is necessary to ensure maximum antenation of frequency above F node. So basically, this is what I have explained to you early on. As for top couple C bandpass filter, they should be used when it is necessary to ensure maximum antenation of frequency below F0. Okay, so basically, this is what I have described early on. Okay, let's talk about some typical application. Okay, for example, in a typical front-end receiver design, okay, the bandpass filter characteristics should prefer be when we have this high side LO injection, okay, we actually prefer to use a top couple L design. While we have low side LO injection, okay, we actually prefer to have a top couple C design. Okay, so like what I mentioned earlier on, maybe in the next video, I'm going to show you some example how to calculate the top capacitor and also the top inductive resonance circuit. With this, I'd like to stop my discussion. Please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much, guys. See you.